As obesity is an epidemic in our nation, it is important that health policies are not only put into place, but followed through with to the end. This is not only to treat the obesity, but also to prevent the growth of this epidemic. In 2001, Surgeon General David Satcher created the Surgeon General's Call to Action to Prevent and Decrease Overweight and Obesity. This policy focuses and encourages on communities as well as individuals to make changes that promote healthier lifestyles. Furthermore, it calls for individuals, families, communities, schools, work sites, organizations, and the media to work together to build a healthier nation. Dr. Satcher saw and understood the necessity for something to be done to address this, such a critical and sensitive subject as obesity. Before we dive deeper into the policy Dr. Satcher created and determined that this policy is both in fact efficient and a necessity, let's take a look at some interesting information about obesity. Obesity is defined by a body mass index or a BMI of 30 or greater. For women, a waist of 35 inches in circumference and men, 40 inches. According to the World Health Organization, or H, I'm sorry, WHO, one in three adults, which is approximately 35% in the United States, are considered obese. Additionally, in addition to that, 32% are considered overweight. With a combined total of these two percentages, over 68 of the percentage, over 68% of the adult population in the United States. Since 1980, obesity has doubled in the United States. The cause of obesity is not a simple one. There isn't just one answer to the sensitive nature question. Genes and behavior both can have an impact on the cause for this chronic illness. Yes, genetics are a factor in the obesity epidemic. The question is on how behaviors either trigger or eliminate the impact of these factors. Behaviors that cause obesity include, but certainly not limited to, dietary patterns. Fresh, food versus prepackaged, overly sugary and or fatty foods. Physical activity or their lack thereof, which is a sedentary lifestyle. Medication use, yes, this does have a contribution factor for obesity. It can cause weight gain. Causes of obesity can also be influenced by social, environmental, economic, individual. The first three items may go hand in hand as friends and family may have an influence over social eating or the environment where someone lives or their economic status. It is well known that low income areas are more prone to obesity. This is for the lack of fresh food and the ability to have safe places for physical activities or access to gyms. Now that we've discussed what obesity is and some of the causes, let's move to discuss some of the risk factors for those who are affected by obesity. According to the Center of Disease Control, obesity is the leading cause or risk factor to other health illnesses and diseases, which are listed below. Please note that these are not, this is not an inclusive list. Cardiovascular disease. This can lead to stroke and heart disease, high blood pressure or hypertension, type 2 diabetes. This is the most common type of diabetes, and type 2 diabetes is all, also holds risk factors for other illnesses such as heart disease, kidney disease, stroke, amputation, and blindness. Additionally, certain types of cancer. According to Janai Tapa in her article, though cancer is not a high on the risk list for risk factors for obesity, meaning obesity is on the list for certain cancers such as uh, ovarian cancer, it is still a risk. The awareness of this disease linkage is not commonly known or understood, but it is very present. Other illnesses are mental illness, sleep apnea, 
and low quality of life. And overall, obesity is a morbid condition that caused death. The cost of obesity. In 2008, the cost of obesity was $147 billion. Yes, $147 billion for one year. Those who were, who were obese cost an additional $1,400 a year in medical costs compared to those who are not obese. Additionally, the cost of obesity isn't just about the money in such a general sense. There's more to consider when thinking about the cost of obesity in the United States. In and outpatient costs, including surgery and hospitals, these are considered direct costs as they in directly impact the costs of insurance companies and or health organizations. Indirect costs are harder to track, but they are the loss of work, meaning not the loss of hours for the employee, but the loss of work that would have been completed for the employer. Obesity plays a role also in lower wages. Those that are obese tend to not have as high of ranking jobs. Now that we have covered what defines obesity, some of the causes, risk factors, and the cost of obesity, we can now take a look at Dr. Satcher's policy to not only treat, but to prevent and reduce obesity and overweight in the associated health-related illnesses in the United States, and why this is a continued needed policy to be held, upheld in the United States. His policy is directed at the general population, everyone in the United States, then the leaders of the community, and even for those at the federal level government jobs such as us. These policies focus on five key principles in order to obtain these goals. They are as, fo they are as follows. To promote the recognition of overweight and obesity major health problems, as we discussed, with obesity reaching close to 94 million people in the United States, or one in three adults. To this day, obesity is still an epidemic in the United States. Balancing healthful eating with regular physical activity to achieve and maintain a healthy or healthier body weight. Behavioral choices of unhealthy eating and not exercising versus healthy eating and exercising may be the difference between a healthy versus unhealthy BMI. Identi number three, identify in effective and cultural appropriate, culturally appropriate interventions to prevent and treat overweight and obesity. Community engagement is very important in this aspect. It is a necessity in helping to treat and prevent obesity. This empowerment pr empowers the community as they help design a program that benefits its organizations and stakeholders, which are the citizens. Number four, encourage the environment changes that help prevent overweight and obesity. Number five, develop and enhance public-private partnerships to help implement this vision. The Surgeon General encompasses these five principles with the goal to increase prevention and to treat those who are obese and, and with other health-related illnesses associated with obesity. The cost of this policy far outweighs the cost of obesity in today's society, meaning the cost up front may be more to implement this policy, but in the long end, the reduction uh, for the long-term medical cost is significant. Implementation of these five principles may cost up front, but in the end, cost cut cut costs of obesity annually as the need for medical attention reduces as well as the cost of employers for lost work. If we, as those in the government positions, are able to make change and continue to enforce this policy, we do not see obesity as an epidemic. We risk the future health of our nation as the obesity rise continues. What we... What can we, as government officials, do to better the lives of those affected by this chronic condition? We must embrace Dr. Satcher's five principles in order to prevent and treat the obesity crisis epidemic today. Thank you.